Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to TFB TV. My name is Hop, and I am a recovering roller delay blowback junkie. Anyway, today we're taking a look at the POF SMG PK. That is Pakistani POF, not to be confused with Patriot Ordnance Factory, which is an American company that makes high-end piston ARs. Very different sort of thing. The POF SMG PK is not actually an MP5K clone, it's what's known as a reverse stretch. That basically means it's an MP5K at the front and a full-size MP5 at the back. And that means there are two ways we can approach this review. One is just to talk about the SMG PK by itself. Is it well made? Is it reliable? How does it shoot? And we are going to do that. But we also have to take a closer look at the concept of the MP5 reverse stretch because the SMG PK is very weird in a way that a more faithful MP5K clone wouldn't be. Let's get into it. POF currently has two MP5 clones on offer, the full-size SMG and this gun, the SMG PK. As far as I know, these guns are actually built under license, so calling them clones isn't totally accurate, but you get what I'm saying. The full-size SMG is as faithful an MP5 clone as you can get, and it's one of the cheapest MP5s you can get. I'm seeing these guns retail for right around a thousand bucks right now, which is even cheaper than the American-made MP5 clones from PTR. The SMG PK, though, is a less faithful copy because it's a reverse stretch, not really an MP5K and not really a full-size MP5. The SMG PK, like a proper MP5K, has a barrel length of 4.5 inches, half that of a full-size MP5. With a full-size MP5, there's an end cap that slides over the back of the receiver and is held in place with a single pushpin. The back end of the MP5K is truncated and has a shortened end plate that slides into the receiver and is held in place with two pushpins, one at the bottom and one at the top. The MP5 reverse stretch pattern has the MP5K front end and an MP5 back end. It's the MP5 equivalent of a mullet, short at the front and long at the back. And like a mullet, it's a little goofy looking, unless you really own it. The advantage of the reverse stretch is that you can use a full-size MP5 brace or stock on it. Those are easier to find and tend to be more stable and more comfortable than MP5K braces and stocks. I'm not sure if this is universally true for all reverse stretches, but the SMG PK also uses the full-size MP5 style rear drum sight with normal circular diopters instead of the MP5K style crenellated style of rear sight. Basically, the MP5K rear sight is a U-notch, which makes it very difficult to focus on or use in general, at least in my experience. The downside to the reverse stretch pattern is that it's weird, and what's the point of an MP5 other than to look cool? Because it's definitely not the most practical use of 9mm ammunition. MP5s are almost exclusively relegated to range toys because there are so many smaller, lighter, more modern, more ergonomic, and often much cheaper ways to push pistol cartridges down range now. The MP5 retains two advantages. They are comfortable to shoot, and they were in some video games you might have played. Believe it or not, some people still buy guns just for the joys of ownership, and some people still shoot guns just for recreation, so if that's you, knock yourself out. The MP5 platform is the firearms equivalent of those classic British roadsters. Yes, commuting to work in an MGB will make you want to drive right into oncoming traffic, but there will be two days of summer every year where driving around in a 60-year-old convertible death trap is actually enjoyable. So are there any practical applications for an MP5K reverse stretch? If you want a smooth, shooting, fun range toy, a full-size MP5 clone is a way better option. If you want the gun from the movie, the MP5K is a better option. Ditto if you want a super compact PDW or bag gun, the MP5K is better. The folding, brace, and stock options for a proper MP5K are going to be quite a lot more compact. The width of a standard MP5 pretty much doubles if you have a brace or stock that folds to the side. And if you have a collapsing brace or stock, then the length is extended by about 3 inches. Still folds down quite compact. Obviously it's a little bit thick, but uh, if you were trying to turn this thing into a backpack gun, this would be a better candidate than a full size. Both of those factors make the full-size MP5 kind of ill-suited as a bag gun. The reverse stretch is for that weird little slice of min-maxing where you want to have the stability of a full-size MP5 on the back end, but you want to minimize overall length with a suppressor. The POF SMG PK, like most MP5 clones, is basically unusable out of the box. The gun comes with an end cap that has a sling swivel on the back end, and you can kind of shoot it like that, or you can hold it out at arm's length and shoot it like a pistol. Both of those are terrible ways to interface with a firearm. At best, they're a waste of ammunition. At worst, you're going to hurt yourself. 
Shooting an unbraced pistol with a sling at extension is kind of doable, and it's slightly less retarded than this cheek pistol shit people won't shut the fuck up about, but still, it's bad. Also, not really an option on my sample of the SMG PK because the sling loop just kept falling off of the end cap. Obviously, the gun needs a pistol brace or a stock, and it actually needs a replacement handguard too. The SMG PK does not look like this when you get it out of the box. I have customized this to make it a little bit more fun to shoot. This has got the SB Tactical SBT 5A folding brace. I just pulled this off of my PTR 9CT so I could review this thing. One of the nice things about this being a reverse stretch, I didn't have to go buy a new brace. That's just a me thing. It's probably not going to apply to most people. Also, up at the front, I've had to replace the handguard. The one that comes on here is a very thin, low-profile plastic handguard. It's kind of got two problems. One is that it extends too far forward and blocks the tri-lug interface. My 9mm can still hasn't cleared yet. It probably never will at this point, thanks ATF. But if I actually wanted to use a can with a tri-lug interface, I would have had to either shave down that handguard or just replace it with something that's properly sized. You could still use the direct thread interface and it wouldn't get in the way of that factory handguard. But you would also want to replace that handguard because these guns get really hot. The MP5 and the MP5K both generate a lot of heat down here by the barrel trunnion. And on the MP5K, there's really nowhere else, nowhere else for your hand to go. It's going to be right up in here. Yeah, even the handguard pin is getting hot and my thumb is resting on the tip of the, the handguard pin. And the sling swivel's fucking hot. <laughs> I mean, this is like 40 rounds in a couple minutes, and it's just, it's already melting down. So, either you get yourself a grip like the one made by Magpul that extends past the trunnion, gives you a little bit more purchase for your hand, gives you a little bit more heat protection, or you get something like this. This is a 3D printed, I can't remember who makes it, but this just gives you a place to put your hand where it's not going to come into quite so much contact with that hot trunnion at the back. So that's what you need to do just to enjoy this gun as a range toy, but if you want to add modern accessories to turn the SMG PK into a defensive firearm, you aren't done yet. The SMG PK has no optics rail like you might find on a PTR, either the 9CT or the 9KT, so you're going to need a claw mount of some sort to run a red dot on here. Claw mounts are irritating and terrible, but hey, you bought a 60-year-old subgun on purpose, so you deserve to suffer a little bit. The same goes for weapon lights. Good luck putting a light on here, and double good luck figuring out how to actually activate it. Full-size MP5 handguards make this a bit easier, but not by much. See how we do with steel, and see if we can find a way to hold this gun where it's not going to burn me or block my sight picture with my own thumb. You can probably tell I've got a lot of baggage surrounding the MP5 platform. But as far as the guns themselves go, I don't have a whole lot bad to say. I can compare the build quality of the SMG PK to my PTR 9CT. I'm not a welder and I don't know shit about HKs, so I can't really tell you which one of these is built better. I feel like the 9CT looks a little cleaner around the edges, but that might not actually mean anything. Again, I don't know how welding works. Maybe this is bad welding? I'm not sure. My PTR 9CT has always been flawlessly reliable with a ton of rounds, and so was the SMG PK. The SMG PK is also a pretty solid value, not just because it runs around a thousand bucks, which is probably cheaper than any other MP5 clone, but it also comes with a cool little soft case, and it includes a 15 round and 30 round magazine. I shot it with the included magazines, as well as with 20 and 30 round KCI Gen 2 magazines. I didn't have any functional issues with the gun itself, although that 15 rounder did need a lot of break in before it would actually accept a 15th round. For the first several hundred rounds, it was a 13 and a half rounder. This little uh, 14 round magazine is adorable, but the 20 rounders are probably a little more practical. Let's do this PDW style. So if you want an MP5, the question you have to ask yourself before you decide which MP5 to buy is, what is an MP5 to you? Is it a fun range toy? Well, then the SMG PK has you covered, but then again, so would the SMG full size, and it'd be a little more fun to shoot. 
But then again, so would any MP5 clone, because they all shoot better than a lot of the cheapo straight blowback 9mm on the market. If you want a practical pistol caliber carbine, as little as you can consider any PCC practical in square brackets current year, then the full size would probably be the ticket. But really, neither of them is going to be the best at that. The headache of mounting accessories and optics is just not worth it with the MP5 platform, unless you're really, really dedicated or stupid. And lastly, are you looking for a legitimate PDW? Every full-size MP5 is a bad choice as a PDW because it's just too big, and civilian requirements for a PDW are very different than military requirements for a PDW. The reverse stretch is smaller than a full-size MP5, but it's smaller in all the wrong places and still isn't going to fit that bad gun role very well. You could get some mileage out of a proper MP5K clone, just be prepared to spend way too much money setting it up and get way too little value out of it, particularly compared to more modern guns. All right, guys, that's all we got for you today. Thank you for watching. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors, Venturi Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We would appreciate it if you would check both of them out. We're also supported directly by our viewers via Subscribestar and Utreon. Links to both of those are in the video description. If you join up, you'll be eligible for a bunch of cool giveaways that James puts together, and you'll also get to watch a Q&A series that James and I have been doing, which is surprisingly good. Who knew James Reeves was such an interesting guy? See you next time.